Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. Fucking wind. Ow. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods. Oh my goodness. It has been so great to be back here in the man cave, uh, working and getting things together. I'm doing a little bit of work on the man cave studio and stuff to get ready for the NFL season. Um, I'm used to having the clock at the red brick house that tells me the days. I know it says it over here, but I haven't gotten used to being able to out of the corner of my eye look at that. I might actually put it up here. Maybe I'll put it right here. Maybe it'll go up here with the bottle of rum that I got in 2019 that won't be open until the Dallas Cowboys go to the Super Bowl. So um, that may be passed down for generations. I hope not. I hope that I'm here and I'm able to actually open that thing up, but you know, you never know. You never know. So the Cowboys now had three padded practices in Oxnard and things, and I'm excited because they got practice today, they're off tomorrow, and then at their next practice, I'll be there. I can't wait to see my buddy Law Nation, man, because you're listening to nothing but the best. And you know, I have to say a couple things here, okay? I'm a YouTuber. You know, some people will try and equate this that you're not a professional. No, I'm not. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a guy who's going to make mistakes and things like that. I'm on YouTube and nobody has to be on YouTube watching. There's 50 plus million channels with content. And I am thankful that you decided that you want to watch me and the Joe Boo Sports Report and all the craziness that is this cowboy fan who's a little cray cray. So when we are not perfect, when we make mistakes and things like that, you understand, we're YouTube. But even the professionals make mistakes. You know, you remember last year how Greg Jennings was talking about Daniel Jones? I trust Daniel Jones more than Dak Prescott. You remember that, right? He's a professional. He's a former NFL player. He's supposed to know what he's talking about, but they're wrong. And so people will see something and think something and put it out there and it may not be, it may be right, it may be wrong. And the thing is, is we sitting here talking about, we sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player. Talking about practice. Talking about practice. Yeah. Talking about practice where you try and find out different things. You try to put people in positions that they're not used to, to see what they can do. What you see in practice may never be translated to a game. Now, I've seen Micah Parsons. There's a great shot of Micah playing linebacker, and he's sniffing out a screen. Is Micah Parsons going to be playing linebacker? I don't know. Maybe they're trying different looks and different takes. Maybe giving somebody else some reps, and maybe they were just giving the other linebackers a break and say, hey, Micah, can you play there? We see Micah you know, running the football. It might have been that they're actually thinking about using Micah Parsons on the goal line, or it could be. Mike just wanted to get in the drill and play a little bit. You just don't know. So don't get too excited and don't get too upset about what you see in practice. And I'm going to say, having been a person, I, I, I've not been an NFL player. I have not. I, I'm not going to preface it that and say I'm an expert, okay? Not. I can say I've had my four years of Little League, my four years of high school, and, and, and three at JMU playing football and playing nose guard that I have a little bit of knowledge and understanding of the position more than somebody who may have never played football. I just may have at least at that position. If you're asking me about wide receiver roots and everything else, definitely. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert on that at all. I'm not, but I can say I'm near and dear to what's going on in the trenches. I understand leverage. I understand jab stepping and ripping. I understand a bull rush. I understand about keeping your feet moving and churning. 
I understand about dropping the anchor on a double team. I understand these things because I've been there. I've lived it. I understand how crazy it is to have the ball literally right there under your nose and can't touch it. it makes you angry. I understand these things. So as we get through here, we're really going to have some fun this week. We're going to have fun. My flight is at 6.30 a.m. I'll be in L.A. at 8.30 in the morning. Take care of some business in L.A. and then head to Oxnard. And we'll be ready for the first practice. With all that being said, here's the thing that's kind of interesting to me. And I don't know if anybody else has noticed this or not. But the thing is, when you have everybody, everybody, you know, Brian Schottenheimer, you know, Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb. It seems like CeeDee Lamb, we ain't really heard a whole bunch about getting CeeDee Lamb underneath a contract. We're, we're wasting time. This is the second week of practice is almost over. And it doesn't seem like anything is moving at this moment with Jerry Jones and CeeDee Lamb. There's no sense of urgency by the front office. But they put the players, the coaching staff, and everybody on this DEF CON. This is it. But I got to tell you, the funny thing is, if Jerry Jones is trying to make people feel uncomfortable and nervous and, and anxious and, and crazy, it doesn't seem to be working. Brian Schottenheimer, do you think that Brian Schottenheimer, because I want you to understand this, if you go through Russell Wilson's statistical best season, his offensive coordinator was Brian Schottenheimer. They got rid of Kellen Moore and Brian Schottenheimer with Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott's offensive coordinator. If Dak Prescott has a good season and all indications are pointing towards him being ready to go, you think Brian Schottenheimer will have a problem getting a job? Because he will have had Russell Wilson, who right now is a shell of himself, his last great season, he was a coach. You got Dak Prescott, runner-up MVP. Dak Prescott continues on that plane. He'll be unemployed for like five minutes. And the same thing with Mike McCarthy. You actually have to look at Mike McCarthy, and let's say hypothetically the Cowboys, who have been you know trashed for not adding any talent, let's say they make the playoffs again, four seasons in a row. Do you look at Mike McCarthy and say, he's a failure? Or do you actually look at him and say, he actually got a team to the playoffs four years in a row with Jerry Jones and the mess that is the Dallas Cowboys? I think you actually have to look differently at Mike McCarthy and say, he did more than any other coach the last 30 years with the Dallas Cowboys. And I can guarantee you, there's some teams out there that will want him. Then you got... Dak Prescott, who, by all means, seems to be enjoying the moment, you know, going through practice. You know, he's stopping to smell the roses, getting the, his personal trainer to get his wife and his daughter, and they're hanging out on the field. And I don't know if it's he's soaking it all in because he realizes that maybe this is the end, but he don't look stressed. Nobody looks stressed out there in the Cowboys' training camp i'm kind of surprised you see mike mccarthy he's got the big cheesy grin hey, hey what's up my people you would think they just got paid so i'm wondering do they know something we don't is dak prescott negotiating you know through the media as well as jerry jones because it always seems like it's the darkest before the dawn with the coaching staff, you know, you know, Jason Garrett went through twice being on the last year of his contract. How many times did we think Jason Garrett was on the hot seat for 10 years? Eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, and we held on to him. So I don't know. This is the atmosphere. This is the circus that Jerry Jones wants. And it's the life of a Dallas Cowboy fan. I guess I should be thankful because being a YouTuber, 
for all of us Dallas Cowboys YouTuber, there's constantly a lot of content out there. Shout out to Ginger Rogers. She said there's really like one Seattle Seahawk YouTube channel, you know, one one guy. Although we're finding out there may be a couple more, but there's nowhere like America's team. It seems like every day I trip over another YouTube Dallas Cowboy channel. Now you got the AI ones and stuff out there, man. It's it's just blown up. This is what Jerry Jones has built. So, so Jerry, let me thank you. Let me thank you for being the crazy man that you are. So Dak has had quite a few things to say. Um, Brian Schottenheimer, I like this. When he was asked about being the last year on his contract, you just work, man. I am blessed to be the offensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys, and I truly do focus on that each one, uh, each day, one at a time. I get the business. If we win enough games, it will be great. If we don't, you deal with that as well. There you go. That You couldn't put that any better than that. You couldn't put that any better than that. Now, from what we're seeing, we're getting a few people that are standing out. Jalen Tolbert has literally taken all kinds of strides. Now that he has gotten out behind the shadows of Michael Gallup, and because C.D. Lamb is not there, Michael, I mean, uh, Jalen Tolbert is really playing really, really well. As Dak Prescott put it, Jalen Tolbert has gotten stronger, he's gotten more physical, he's got the right attitude, and he could be a number one on another team. That bodes really, really well. If you can step into the number two role and you got Brandon Cooks as number three, that would be amazing. And what's interesting, and I, you can take take it for what you will with Dan Salio. Dan's my guy, okay? I go there, I get trashed. It's totally different if it's just me and Dan. We can actually have a real conversation about football as opposed to Philly 500. You know, where Philly, literally with Philly 500, what I want to do is just say, Philly, shut the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top of shut fuck mountain where there are no more fuck ups to shut. That's what you feel like saying when I'm on the Dan Leo show with Philly 500. It's just shut up, okay? Because he just talks so much smack. But be that as it may, Dan was saying, you know, the Eagles, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, they're great. He said, but after you get past those guys, it's chopped liver. It's chopped liver. He thinks that the Cowboys, when you go from one to five, have a better overall wide receiver core. And we have seen some guys that are actually stepping up that you didn't know before training camp. And this is a good thing because you need a plethora of players because the NFL season is a marathon. And in the same way, we need guys like Trey Lance and Cooper Rush to be the best players they can be because there's no guarantee. We've seen quarterbacks left and right. Right now, Geno Smith is hurt. Right now, Justin Herbert's in a walking boot for the next two weeks. Every player is one play away from being injured. And that's a fact in the NFL. we got to recognize and make sure you're prepared. I don't know if Jerry Jones is going to do anything to supplement this or not. If we're going to wait until the final cuts are made there and they're going to be getting the toaster leave-ins and things like that, I don't know. But I want to go through for a second here. I just want you to listen to Dak Prescott talking about a couple of things here, including the business side. As I said before, just to be intentional with her, and I'm blessed to be able to do that. <laughs> Contract yeah, stuff. You see the smile? Having that joy and you don't have to worry about that talk to those persons. Yeah, I mean, for sure, as I said, I don't think that's pressures or I necessarily worry about the talk. I've got a great team. I'm confident in getting something done. Confident uh, in the front office here. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't really think about it, to be honest with you. Um, as, as I said, the first day, I'm under contract right now, so all I need to do is be the best that I can be for my job. Um, 
and this year and then whatever whatever happens whether it's in a couple of weeks whether who knows when it is if it does happen um it, it'll happen i'm not worried about that and as i said i've got people that are handling that with the front office here and a lot of confidence in it yeah, so my birthday just passed. Got a great, you know, happy birthday message from him, and that led to some talks um, as, as well. And yeah, I mean, I know he's uh, he's just shared with me, right? He's he's wanting to get back, ready to get back, um, mm -hmm. hoping that this thing gets done for him. I know I am CD, as well, we and um, hopefully we can get him back sooner than later. But I know he's grinding, I know he's itching and working, and um, he's ready to be back with the boys. Uh, I'm a guy that grew up with two older brothers. Um, you understand what a brotherhood means, um, mm -hmm. not only for just this team, but um, the fraternity of the NFL and the players. And um, the money's out there, and the money can, it can it can happen. It can be done. There's ways to make everything work for both ways. Uh, and that's in that sense is it's always about pushing the envelope for the next man. And um, that that's why I said that. But then again, it's. I've never truly cared about the number, and um, yeah, whether it was the first time in the, the the franchise tag and negotiations or now. So, so that's why I said I have an agent that I'm confident in, and, and a front office that, that we can figure out something that works for both of us and makes sense. What have you learned about the receivers beyond Cooks and, and Colbert, the guys that you've had work the last couple years? What have you learned about the guys behind with CD? Yeah, the, the, they're itching. They're itching for their opportunity. Um, I know when they're getting in, getting in that huddle with the ones, um, they're, they're not only excited for it, but they're taking advantage of it. And the guy that just jumps out top of my mind, obviously, is T. Billy. Um, and just having talking to him and, and, and Cooper, knowing I have a conversation with them. This is the first time the guys went from a, a team to having an offseason with that team to carrying into to the next season. And I think that that pays dividends. And you look out there and you see what he's doing. He's been able to use his speed, somebody that that is his strength. But when you're thinking, you can't play fast. And I think he's gotten rid of that that thinking part. And he's making big plays time and time again. Uh, Cropper mm -hmm. as well. Um, another guy, and then obviously Jalen Brooks, a guy that I threw with a lot in the offseason. Um, spent a lot of time together, getting a good chemistry. Um, a guy that runs fast, can break down um, well, in and out of routes, catches the ball. Um, and those are just to name a couple of guys. And then obviously some great tight ends that we've got. Guys are stepping up. They're making sure that, they're, that I'm looking back at them when it's one-on-one -on -one and uh, that I'm not hesitant to throw them, throw them the ball when it's their opportunity. I'm going to stop it right there. Because here's the thing. Because people, I've heard so many people that have said, you know, Dak needs to do a team-friendly deal. You know, first of all, you know, for somebody else to speak about what somebody else should make, somebody else's money. I was always taught, you, you don't mess with some another man's money. Be that as it may. We see other teams that are going out and signing everybody, you know. And when people say, blow up the Cowboys, you know what? They're not winning with these guys. They need to blow it up and start all over. Well, you could look around and say, Miami ended up going out there and getting Tariq Hill, going out there and getting Jalen Ramsey, going out there and getting Tua going out there and paying Waddle, that they've gone out there and they've spent a whole lot of money and they're not going any further than the Cowboys. Do they need to blow, blow it up? That they're putting good money after bad? Because they did spend a whole lot of money. You know, Buffalo, you could say Buffalo. You know, they paid Josh Allen a whole lot, although they did get rid of um, Diggs. But they've gone out there and brought in, you know, Von Miller and Diggs and, you know, have Josh Allen and paying those guys. And, you know, they were literally in cap hell. Do, do we say that they need to blow that team up? Because it seems like they've hit their peak and they're kind of going down. I don't hear that with them. You know, that they're paying good money after bad and they need to blow it up. I, I, I don't hear them saying that about the Jets because, you know, they paid all the money to Aaron Rodgers, and that may end up being the worst trade in history. No, it couldn't be worse than the Herschel Walker one. But you follow what I'm saying. Right now, he's fighting after missing the whole season after, what, three plays? Um, fighting with his number one receiver and not showing up in the offseason. Do they say they need to blow it up? No. That only the Cowboys, a team that have actually gone to the playoffs and been 12 win teams three years in a row, that they need to blow it up. That's not discussed anywhere else. And as far as if Dak should give money back to the Cowboys, 
to help them make up for their mistakes. Have you ever loaned money to somebody before and you've loaned money to somebody because, hey, man, I, you know, I need some money, bro. Can you help a brother out and I'll, I'll hook you up come payday, right? I'll hook you up come payday and stuff and, you know, I just, I just I'm a little short right now. And you go over and you see your friend who hasn't paid you back. You see him at the club, you know, bottle service. Or you see new rims on the truck. And you're kind of like, I thought you needed some help to get by and take care of business. Yeah, man, don't worry, I got you, I got you. And then, of course, payday, you can't find them. I feel like that's the Dallas Cowboys. That Dak could do a team-friendly deal. And they're going to go ahead and get themselves some new rims. They ain't going to go out there and, and get some more players to add to that. They've had opportunities to do that. They've had four years of the dude less than $2 million. $680,000, $680,000, $680,000. Two million dollars cap hits. They had him at $17 million, $19 million, and $26 million. And they didn't do squad douche. So why now are we going to believe that Dak Prescott turn around and say, hey, you know what? I'll settle for the Kirk Cousins deal. I'll take $45 million a year. Give you some instant cap relief right here. Do you actually believe that Stephen Jones is going to say, oh, man, we got some extra cash. Let's go out here and get ourselves some players and get ourselves a Super Bowl. Because if that's the case, I'm sure Dak Prescott would be all in for that. I'm sure he would be all in for that. But I don't feel like that's the case. And maybe that's the discussion that's there. And maybe, you know, they've sent over an offer to Dak that's like that. And Dak is, you know, they haven't heard back from Dak. And typically, if somebody offers you something, you know, makes an offer that insults you, you don't call them back. <laughs> makes them, screw you. So this is Troy Aikman talking about Pat Mahomes and Pat Mahomes kind of taking that team-friendly deal and leaving money on the table where Kansas City is trying to put people around them. And if that should actually work as well. Right? Doesn't it feel like that with him? Yeah, it, no, it does. And and, and not because he's done it already. Uh, he, he's already, I, I, I feel that he's left some money on the table knowing that he's going to have better players around him as a result of that. And <clears throat> and, and, and obviously it's worked for them and they do a good job of continuing to, to restock the shelves and bring in good players. And of course, Andy Reid, it's what they have going in Kansas city is special. And when you have a quarterback, who's obviously as talented as he is, but yet as unselfish as he is, uh, then it gives yourself a chance. And, you know, another guy that probably doesn't get talked about in that same light because he hasn't had the same success in the postseason is is a guy who I'm very fond of right here in Dallas, and that's Dak Prescott. He, he, you know, what I respect so much about Dak, one is he's a great leader, he's a great person, uh, but he's an old school guy in that he 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 doesn't care about anything but winning, and it frustrates him beyond imagination that they haven't had more success in the postseason, and it's the only thing that's keeping him from really. Uh, being mentioned with with Pat Mahomes and and some of the other greats. I would love to see you know how Dak responds to everything that is said about him. If he is only determined and driven by winning, whenever they lose, because it gets so loud, yeah, so yeah. so loud, and it's always like. Uh, you know, Stephen A. Obviously, and the Dallas Cowboys fans have the relation that he has, and he's had you know the highest rated television show in sports for like the last eleven years. One of his big angles. One of his actual, like, one of his things is, like, Dak's going to blow it. Dak's going to blow it. So Dak works his ass off just driven by winning only. And all he hears all year is he's going to. ESPN's got a problem. And then for it not to work out again and again, what if he breaks through, huh? What if, what if Dak Prescott breaks through? Feels like it's a lame duck year down there, though, doesn't it? Hey, well, it does. Doesn't if it? He, if he if he breaks through this year, I mean, I, I do believe he's going to be the first quarterback to 60 million. And uh, it, from know, Jerry, from Jerry or somewhere else. 
Well, that's, that's that's the question. That's the question, and it, the longer this goes, the more I think he will be playing somewhere else. Uh, you know, I, I I just if if it if it continues to drag on and he plays great, and then the Cowboys come in late to say, hey, now we want to pay you. I I don't know. I I don't I I don't know where his head will be at that point. But uh, yeah, so he. <clears throat> When you look at the numbers, if you didn't have the names and you just looked at stats, and again, I go back to I don't care about stats. I just want to see wins. But wins included, you would you would put Dak Prescott's numbers over the last couple of years along with Patrick Mahomes's. But it's what's happened in the postseason that has separated those two. And so that's where that that's where the whole organization has to be better. This isn't just Thank this you, isn't Troy. just on Dak Prescott. This goes back for the last 25, 30 years uh, that the Cowboys just have failed to play their best football when the games have mattered most in January. This year, this past year, was the one, too. Yeah. You know, I was just watching all those highlights, and I was reliving how we felt about the Cowboys last year because they're on going to be on primetime. Yep. They're going to be talked about. You're going to see them. Last year, there was an entire train that I was on that was like, hey, it's different in yeah. Dallas yeah. this year. They had so, a lot of, I was on it. They had a lot of injuries. I was on it. I, 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 I agree, Pat. <sighs> I, you know, they've had other teams in other years that, that were, were good, and I thought they were, they were capable. But last year, just it, it just felt different. And quite honestly, it felt different in training camp. And so they then got into the regular season, and it just felt that it had the makings of a championship team the 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 locker room was tight uh they all seemed to be on the same page all the things as you know that are required to to win it all and they were positioned perfectly after the after the demise of the eagles over the second half of the season to be put in the position that they were to potentially have two home games uh and then go to you know probably san francisco for the championship game which is where it would have been and then they don't get out of the first round. Jordan Love obviously Just you know, does what he does. Yeah. Uh, that was a huge disappointment. And so I think it's hard yeah. to come back year after year. I think that's going to be the challenge for the 49ers. You know, they keep knocking at the door. And how many times can you keep getting there and getting there and getting to the level that you have to get to? And then with the offseason, the way that it has gone for Dallas, there just seems to be a lot of a lot of negativity about yeah, yeah. what they did or didn't do this offseason. And, uh, and it'll be interesting to see what this season looks like for them. And the truth there, Ruth, is, yeah, it's the Cowboy fans. You can see it in training camp. The excitement is not there. When I'm looking here at the commanders and the Eagles, the fans that are there, although it's a little easier to get, if you're an Eagle fan, to get to the link and things. Um, or if you're you know, a Washington fan, to, to get, get out there. And they're not opened every day like the Cowboys. To get to Oxnard, there's not that many people that are in Oxnard to, to really go to training camp. You're traveling to get there, okay? I am literally going 3,000 miles to get to training camp. So it is a little bit different. But in the past, you've had crowds galore there for the Dallas Cowboys. And Jerry Jones really should look in the mirror and think about what's going on with the fans and everything else that is with the Cowboys. All right, good people, I've got to get out and about. I've got to go take care of Mama. I've got some electrical issues that she got in her garage to fix. I've got a few stores I need to go to to pick up some stuff uh, for the trip. And boy, four o'clock in the morning we'll be headed to the airport so i gotta get some sleep here too but five o'clock today we will be doing our live stream and i've got some work to do because oh my goodness i'm doing this for leo just for leo see we've got our chicken that's right here right that's the eagle's color that's the eagle's color on there and i figured out i figured out the name for our eagle's chicken we're gonna put a number one on it and guess what his name's going to be? Ring. <laughs> Ring, that's it. Come on. You know it's funny. You know that's funny. All right? Have a great day, good people, and I'll see you soon. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report.
And the only thing I say I got to say is, how about